Only Samsung could tell us why the S21 FE was released just about one month before the S22 series phones were launched. Right now, when we have the latest and greatest from Samsung announced, I wanted to take a look at the Galaxy S21 FE after using it as my daily driver for a month and hopefully tell you if it is worth buying. This phone received a lot of praise for its feature set but also it was criticized for its launch price, which I'll talk about later in the video. First, the features. The S21 FE follows the familiar design language we've seen on the regular S21 series, aluminum rail and frosted plastic backplate. In the hand, the phone feels nice, the build quality is great, there is IP68 certification for water and dust resistance, but it simply does not feel as premium as Samsung's newly released S22 series flagships. On the other hand, the FE model has a similar plastic backplate as the S21. I found the 6.4-inch AMOLED display to be sharp, bright and color accurate, and it has the 120Hz refresh rate for smoothness. Due to small bezels on each side, the S21 FE feels quite compact, especially if you switch from larger devices like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra or even the latest S22 Ultra. As the fan edition phone, the S21 FE may upset quite a few fans by skipping the micro SD card, a headphone jack, and there is no charger in the retail box. While I have plenty of them at home, Samsung's idea of making this phone is to give something what the fans want, so I think that the charger should be included as everyone appreciates an extra charging brick. What Samsung didn't forget was a fast and accurate fingerprint scanner and loud enough and pretty good sounding stereo speaker system. Also, Samsung used a Snapdragon 888 5G, which may not be the latest chipset on the market, but it still delivers flagship grade performance no matter if you play the latest 3D games or simply scroll through the UI. Speaking of which, it is the same likable, no-nonsense One UI 4 with powerful features and plenty of customization options. It has become one of my favorite Android iterations over the years and I found the S21 FE to be fast and smooth pretty much all the time. When it comes to cameras, the phone has a triple shooter system with a wide, ultra-wide and 3x zoom lens. On the front, there is a 32 megapixel shooter. All three cameras on the back perform great. There is plenty of detail, sharpness, the colors are pretty accurate, and in general, you are getting a near flagship grade camera quality with this phone. Even in low light, you'll be more than happy with the image quality, and night mode is available on all camera lenses. You can zoom in up to 30 times, but this feature is more for marketing, unless you don't really care about the quality. In general, I love selfie quality, but there is a bummer. There is no autofocus on the front-facing camera. I can't believe that Samsung didn't give this feature for the fans on the Fan Edition phone. As a result, some selfies come out a little bit soft if you don't nail focus manually. If you do that, you'll love selfie quality in both good and poor lighting. 4K video quality is one of the best you can get on any Android phone in both 30 and 60 FPS modes. Even though the ability to use the wide angle and 3x zoom lens is limited to 30 FPS, I love the flexibility of switching between lenses while you are recording the video. 4K 60 FPS selfie video is also nice, but it could be a little bit more stable. The sound recording quality is very good. FE or fan edition. This is handheld video. Uh, lighting conditions are good and I'm not using any stabilization tools. I'm just holding the device in my hands. Right now I'm holding it in two hands. Because... When it comes to battery, the 4500 mAh unit will last you a full day, but obviously that depends on how you use the phone. On average, I could get about 5 hours of screen on time, which is a pretty standard result. Keep in mind, however, that I used maximum screen brightness setting quite a lot. The phone supports wireless charging and 25 watts wired fast charging allows you to fully charge the phone in 1 hour and 15 minutes, which is an adequate result. In conclusion, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is a solid phone with plenty of flagship qualities. 
I like its form factor, display, excellent all-around performance, great cameras and pretty good battery life. However, Samsung claims that they made this phone for true fans, but they forgot that they still like expandable storage, a headphone jack, autofocus on the selfie camera, and fans deserve a charger in the retail box, despite the recent quote-unquote trends. Finally, the prices of this phone dropped to about $700 in the US or 700 euros in the EU, but I still think it is too expensive, especially given the fact that you can get the regular S21 for less. Also, the new S22 was just announced and while the early bird prices of it start at about 800 bucks, it is more powerful, it ships with the latest technology, it feels much more premium in the hand and if you still choose the S21 FE, the S22 series makes you feel that you are buying an outdated phone. In other words, it is worth spending an extra 100 bucks as you get a lot of benefits. At the end of the day, the Galaxy S21 FE is still a very solid phone from Samsung and it offers a lot of flagship qualities, but it faces tough competition from Samsung itself, unless the prices of this fan edition phone drop a little bit more, so it is easier to differentiate it from this and last year's Samsung's flagship lineup. What do you think about the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE? Would you buy this device or would you choose another option? As always, like the video if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always, it was Linus, thank you for watching and see you soon.